see how God exemplifies that, how mm. Christ exemplifies that. Like, well, this is my temple. Yeah. If I have to whip you, I will whip yeah. you. If I have to kick you, I will kick you. Yes. If I have to flip it, I will flip it because this is a violation mm. of my being. Mm. This is a violation of my purpose. Mm. This is the violation of my presence, mm. the reason why I'm here. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? So, no, I will not let you violate, I will not let you cross the line that far. Mm. And yeah, that's you can see that's what Christ was mm, doing there, and that's what He's teaching us to do with our temple. That is a big and, disrespectful, yeah. In our body, mm. and we have to understand that as as human beings, we are a vessel, mm. and if we don't exercise this right, I will call it a right, and if we don't exercise this, sometimes don't exercise this this anger. Mm. The the wicked one will we have to, will um will will take advantage. They will advantage. because we have to understand that they're wicked. Yeah, he said they they're wicked. Yeah. We have to understand, like, he, he had to use that aggression with his anger. He wanted them to understand that I'm concerned about this. You're yeah. not maintaining. Yeah. So, so I think that is the level we need to get to, like yeah. the level of prayer. When mm. someone do something wrong, um, your neighbor, because he said you're not wrestling against flesh and blood, mm. but principality against principality and power, power in the high places, yeah. which means anyone who upsets you. When when Peter came mm. to him and mm. said, "Oh, you're not going to die," this that mm. he knew that mm. this is not the from the Father. Yeah. He rebuked him yeah. because he knew that Peter, he, he knew that Peter is is he loved him, he made him, mm. and he knew that. He's not wrestling against flesh and blood yet. Yeah. So if he was to get angry with Peter, he knew that no, I, I won't get angry with him. But I would get rather get angry to pray and rebuke. Yes, and you can spirit. see that. You can see that. You can see the the potential to be susceptible, susceptible to um, the enemy's devices mm. because you see that in Peter's Peter's life. Mm. Peter, at one point. Um, you, if you see it in the book of Matthew, Matthew mm. 16, mm. 17 to 18, mm. um, Christ called Peter the rock, mm. you know, um, and he answered him and said, um, blessed are you, Simon, this one says Simon Bar John, 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 John. Um, for flesh and blood has not revealed this mm. to you, but my father who is in heaven, mm. and I tell you, you are Peter. Mm. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. The verse prior to that, Christ was asking them, "Who, who do you, who do you say I am? Mm. So who am I? Who am I?" Yeah. And the other um, disciples responded, saying, mm, "Some people say that you are John. Um, is it John the Baptist, or mm. you are this and you are that?" And um, Peter said, "You are the Christ." Mm. So Peter was in the spirit. Yeah. He was speaking and Christ recognized that. You have to understand how deep this is because mm. when Christ was in the earth, he didn't go about announcing, I am the Messiah, I am the Christ. I am the... He didn't go about mm. doing that. No. He didn't go about... He, a large amount of the times when he was asked, who are... Do you call yourself... Um, do you call yourself the son of God? His response would be like, he would allow you to decide. Mm. Most of the time, he would allow you to yeah. decide. He would not tell you openly. Yeah. He would say, well, it's you that say that I am. Yeah. Is even when John the Baptist yeah. was about to be beheaded said, and sent a messenger, go and check if he's the things Christ. Things are happening. He said, "Well, this is happening and that is happening, and the, how can you? Well, you you decide." Yeah. Do you think that I am only one Christ? person Jesus spoke to? to only make one person, him, which is that woman, that woman by, by the well. well. He's the only person that Christ revealed to him that I am the Messiah. Yeah. To understand what what Peter was doing here. Yeah. For him to then for him know. to know, and even the other disciples were saying. That um, some people say that you're this, some people say Christ. Said, then Peter said, "No, I know that you are the Messiah. Mm, I recognize. I recognize that, and that that Jesus was impressed with that. See, and he said, ah. he said, you, <laughs> you are the rock, yeah. On 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 you, my church shall be built. Now this is the same Peter who was um, being um, just after verse few verse after uh, that. It's the same in the same chapter, mm. in the same chapter." Peter was rebuked by Christ mm. and Christ called him Satan. Mm. Get away from me. You know, he rebuked Matthew Satan 16. out of Peter. Yeah, Matthew 16, 23. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. Because Peter now, the same Peter that 
that this that the spirit of God was was um operating him in him somehow had allowed his thoughts. Is that not does that not show how quick we can actually yeah. drift away from yeah. the plans of God? Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, we can actually, it's so quick we must abide. To, to focus on the things of this world. Mm, mm. So that's why the Bible always say, be mm. spiritually alert mm. constantly because they're just, they're, they're waiting for the they're, they're just, for one, the entity, the demonic spirit, they're not, they're not, they're not, I mean, they're so wicked that like anything that they spot, any little holes, loop hole, they just dive in. Mm. And that is what they're waiting for. Yeah. And that must, that few seconds that, that Peter that allowed, yeah. that, is, that was reacted. it. And Jesus, that few seconds. Yep. Jesus rebuked that spirit away from him. Yeah. And this is St. Peter that was the rock mm. that we mm. are standing on. Yeah. I mean, the devil uses every opportunity he can. He can. And sometimes, you know, if you don't understand the joy that there is in God, you think that this is exhausting, but it isn't what I'm about to say. Like, you have to intentionally, consciously try to place yourself in the presence of God. Not that God is not there all the time. He is there. But what I mean is that you have to make sure that you constantly remind yourself to be aware of the presence of God. Mm. Because when you're aware of the presence of God constantly, you're mindful of what you're doing. Yeah. And sometimes you forget that God is there. Mm. Sometimes it's that for me... My struggle, sometimes my personal struggle can even be like the music I listen to. Mm. Because I love music, right? And I listen to a wide range of music. I can listen to almost almost anything, um, as long as it has a positive message um, behind it. And there is some music that I'll play, mm. that the Spirit of God told me, take it off. Mm. Even if it's not for you, be careful your children are listening mm. to it. You know? And so the devil's looking for every opportunity. Even in the music, he can speak to your soul. Yeah. Everything. Even in the music, he find that the music can change your mood and yeah. makes you start thinking in a funny, weird way. Like yeah. you start thinking. And then, but when you're in worship, you see how that also changes your yeah. mood. It takes you to another realm yeah. and another way of thinking, and it gives God access to you. Mm. But just by the words that you're listening to in that worship, you're giving yourself, you're making God accessible mm. in your life. He doesn't want us to give. So he's looking for every, you have to make sure you close every door and every window mm. of your heart and of your being. He's mm. looking for every opportunity to land in there. We, and yeah, yeah, it's true. We really need, we yeah. really need to be on a lot in the spirit every time because, I mean, we see what's happening in the world right now. Mm. The entity are around the demons, demonic spirit are roaming around and ready for anyone, anybody mm. who has that look oh, who has his void have not been filled by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They're ready to go there and fill it up. Mm. And we should not allow them. Yeah. We cannot allow them. Mm -hmm. We've allowed them before, and but now we've kicked them out. Yeah. You know, and we are now I mean even filled we, up by we, the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, when we talk about the uh, this when this mentioned I keep talking about the entities and all these wicked spirits, you have to understand that this is so true. In as much as there's a spiritual you know, we can't see them there in the spirit, but it is real. Mm. It is real. They're, Definitely, they are in the earth and they are coming in their masses. Yeah, what you saw, what we saw happening in the days of Noah, mm. is happening right it's now. Right now, it's developing in the background right now. Be mindful what you're listening to. Be mindful what you're watching. Be mindful what you're allowing your children to watch. It, they're looking for hmm. every loophole and every opportunity. Yes, I'm not. We're not trying to install fear. No, it's, um, it's we not know that fear. The, 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 the love of God and the blood of Christ protects us. Mm. But that doesn't mean that we mustn't be alert. Yeah. We must be alert and we, we must be mindful because... Like like we are we have been constantly saying they're looking for every loophole and every opportunity and just yeah the day, the days are the days because ahead the days it, ahead we're are, saying this based on dark. visions that we've seen based on yeah. studies based on some things that we're studying on mm. and we're seeing some mm. I mean it's some some things we can't say here because yeah. I mean some things that we we're, we're seeing. And some things that is yet to happen is mm. is is and not far fetched. The one thing that we've written as well is the fact that anyone who is not occupied with the word of God mm. and the things of God makes themselves vulnerable. Yeah. To this um 
to this uh, wicked spirits. Anyone that is not occupied with the word of God and mm. the, call yourself a believer, I don't care. Call yourself a Christian, I don't care. Mm. That's just the title. Mm. Is it does it ref, is it reflecting your life? Mm. Is that does that title reflect your life? Mm. Call yourself a pastor, call yourself a minister, call yourself a dickhead or what do you call it? Geo, whatever it is, is that reflecting in your life? Are mm. you occupied? Mm. Are you occupied with the word of God? Mm. Are you occupied with truth? Like, learn the truth. Learn the history of your faith. What is the history? Don't allow an atheist teach you the history of your mm, faith. Mm. Don't allow an unbeliever teach you the history of your faith. Let it be that you already understand the history of your faith. You already mm. understand your faith. You understand the word of God. So that when the atheist comes to tell you about yourself, mm. you can correct them. Yeah. You can say, oh, I see your analysis. Oh, I see your way of thinking. I understand your logic and I respect that. Mm. But here's where you've gone wrong. Mm. If you don't know scripture, they come with their analysis, their philosophies and their theologies and their explanation, you will be confused. Yeah. You, <laughs> we've, we've experienced, I mean, it. We've I mean. experienced <laughs> so-called believers becoming confused by external explanations because they're not rooted in the word of yeah. God. They're not grounded in the word of God. Mm. Be grounded in truth because these times the lies are increasing and the deceptions are increasing mm. right now. The enemy is taking even the very word of God. Already the Bible is, they've twisted it. But even at this very moment now, taking the word of God and twisting it. Yeah. And really, really trying. There, there are believers, there are so-called believers that are actually falling for the lies of the enemy right now. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and it hasn't even started getting dark yet. Mm. <laughs> he hasn't even started getting dark. I yet. mean, this is just the beginning because, like, I, few visions that I've been seeing lately is only by just casting demons. You just know that they're here. Mm. They're here. I mean, and they they're just they're still coming. Mm -hmm. They're coming because things are going to happen. But you know, one thing I love about God: messages like this is preparing us. Messages like this is preparing us for. Righteous anger. Mm. What are you angry about? Is it ang are you angry about the kind of spirit that you've allowed to use you to pray, pray, speak into that into that into your life, or is it someone else that you're angry at that you need to pray for mm. because of let that anger be to pray, not mm. to fight, yeah. not to not to be not to hate that person. Mm. You must love. That's why the Bible says, pray for your enemies. Mm. You understand? Love your neighbor as yourself because he knows that if you don't love your neighbor, you're not hating your neighbor. You're, you, 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 you're just not... You're basically hating that person, but instead, the Bible wants you to love that person, but pray against that spirit using that person. Yeah. We don't have, we don't have time we don't have time to be angry so with people. so there's no time you know, right now no if you really if you, in your heart i mean if truly in your heart you're a true follower follower of christ i'm telling you that you wish many of all of us to make it to heaven mm. and if you truly wish all of us to make it to heaven truly in your heart mm. you will pray that mm. prayer you mm. will pray righteous you pray with righteous, righteous anger, anger for, anger for, your, brothers for your brothers and sisters. And sisters. Yes. For your neighbor, for yes. your friend, for your enemy. Yes. Because you know what the kingdom, especially if you've seen a glimpse of what the kingdom of God looks right. like. And even when you look at some of the some of the policies and the, the laws that are being implemented right now, when you look at what is going on in the world right now, when you look at some of the things that's happening to people, mm. I don't want to make mention of certain things, mm. but when you look at the reaction mm. of the, the, the government policies that are going on and people kind of like giving into that and seeing what's happening to them. Mm. Seeing what's happening to pregnant women. Yeah. Seeing what's happening to um, mothers and, and the, the so-called vulnerable people who are supposed to be protected. Seeing what's actually happening to them. Mm. You know that the devil's wicked. Yeah. You know that this is not a Honestly. man because it doesn't matter how wicked man is, they can't be this wicked. Honestly, you Man know. cannot be this wicked. You you, you, this is the time to pray. You know that this is wicked. Jesus is telling us righteous anger is an anger of prayer against the entities that is using individual. The demonic spirit that is using individual. That is what God is telling us to pray about. Mm. That is why is anytime you hear God angry, is angry because the heart of man has not changed. Mm. 
to serve him. The heart of man has not changed for repentance. The heart of man has not changed to submit to him. The heart of man has not changed serving other gods. Mm. He doesn't like all these things. And God wants us to, to love one another. And the reason of this message is love. Mm. For you to love someone, you have to, instead of you getting angry with that person, see that person, but they don't know what they're doing, just like Stephen, sorry, and pray for them. Mm. Yes, because you'll see that um, one thing I've, we made mention of is like, each time when we talk about this, the Peter, mm. the two um, the two parts of, of Peter, so to speak, you see that each time um, Jesus called called him, mm. Jesus called him by the Spirit, not by yeah, his name. Yeah. Jesus did not um, rebuke Peter, he rebuked the Spirit. Yeah. So he addressed the Spirit, so he addressed Satan, yeah. um, where he was, where he knows that he came as a, as a, as a distraction. Mm. And then he called him the rock, yeah. where he knew that he was being used by the God. by by the spirit of God. Mm. So he was constantly speaking to the to the spirit, mm. not even not, not not the individual, yeah. not to the person directly. So we must we must be aware. We must learn how to God help us. So God mm. really, Amen. really help us because Amen. it's. I'm not saying it's an easy it's an easy task to because do, we are all need to be. It mm. is it is something that we must consciously try to make an effort to do. So I think we've assessed verse. 14 very well yeah i think we should move on to verse 15 and 16 mm. and making a whip of cords he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen and he pulled out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables and he told those who sold the pigeons take these things away do not make my father's house a house of trade mm. Okay, so I think we kind of like touched on this yeah. in so many different ways already, mm. but we'll just we'll probably just summarize it. Mm. Um, this is so the, obviously this is what Jesus's response, yeah. yeah. Right, so this is um, how he responded mm. to the violation. Yeah, I've written some point to, to John two this this passage and mock Jesus for losing his temper, which is what we've talked about in mm. different ways. Far from it, this was not out of control yeah. emotion. Mm. We're not, we will not. Jesus was not behaving because he couldn't control his emotion, mm, which mm. is what a lot of us do when we're angry. Mm. It's an outpoured emotion, like yeah. emotions building up and we pour it out. Ah, that's, not, he, that's not what he's no, doing. No. But reason controlled righteous indignation. Mm. Let's, let's, let's explore this further. If you subscribe to the Bible's claim that Jesus is the Lord, mm. that is God, then you can appreciate the perspective that the temple was the house of God, God. the Father and God the Son. In short, Jesus had the jurisdiction to cleanse his own house of worship. Wow. Which is what which is what which is what we have been discussing yeah. the entire time. Yeah. It's it's like somebody coming to your house and violating it. Mm. You won't have it. No. You have a right actually. Mm. It's your house. And if even by law, mm. whatever you do to that person, you can say that person trespassed. This is where I'm living. Yeah. You can't just this, this that person trespassed. Mm. He came into my home. And, and did this yeah or without my authority mm. and behave this way you're, you're trespassing yeah and so so even if you if you were to take this to the to to the highest judge he was he was acting he mm. was he was in his acting in his yeah. right yeah in the physical sense this is my house mm. in the symbolic sense this is who i am yeah this is what yeah this is what christ was saying yeah this is who i am so he had every right to respond violently mm. to the violation of his temple. Mm. This is mm. a violation of my temple. And yeah. so I will act. If somebody comes to your house and tries to do something crazy, or maybe, I don't know, hit your children, or instinctively you're going to be like, no, I have, I have a right to protect mm. what is mine. Mm. So, you know, let, let our anger be praying mm. for people mm. so that their evil desire mm. can leave them. Mm. And turn to God. Mm. 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 Yeah, and let let our this is not uh, this is not um a, an excuse to justify to justify violence. Mm. It's not what we're saying. I don't know. If I'm, I don't want to speak. Um, I don't want to speak restrict. I don't want to restrict it to anything mm. because perhaps mm, there might be a time in your life where violence is necessary. Mm. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to restrict it to anything. But all I'm saying is not. Um, it's not to justify violence. It's yeah. just so understand that where there's a violation in your being mm. 
or understand that if somebody else offends you, mm. understand that there a violation ha- has happened in that person's being yeah. that may they may not be aware of. Mm. Because but because you're in spirit, you can see that a, a wicked spirit has violated that person. Yeah, and that's the reason why they're responding or they're behaving to me. So you don't you don't, you don't then give in to that to that um, energy. You already know you get, you respond with the spirit of God that mm. is, ha- mm. resides inside of you yeah you respond in prayer you respond in rebuke if it's necessary sometimes you might need to rebuke that person in their Mm -hmm. face sometimes Mm -hmm. yes that's necessary sometimes you can rebuke privately but those are the ways that you can respond violently in this in the spiritual context so we're moving on to um verse 17 and 18 it says his disciples remember that it was written zeal for your house will consume me Mm. what does this mean Mm. If we go to the book of Psalms 69 verse 9, you see there what the disciples were talking about. It said, For zeal for your house has consumed me, and the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. Mm. So this is what the disciples were... Re- were they recognized yeah. really time. Yeah. You know, they recognized that, wow, mm. this is in the scripture mm. when he spoke that word. But how come the priests could mm-hmm. not recognize this? Yeah. How come the f- those top Pharisees could yeah. not recognize this? Yeah. Because they were lost in their own self desire. Mm. So something you happened. Know. Something happened there in the minds of the disciples. Oh. That awareness. That yeah. Was, uh, that revelation. That oh my God, the scripture talks about this, and they're like everything that we're talking about was so early is, is settling in. Like, yeah. Wow. This is his house. Mm. And the zeal for his house, indeed, yeah, has consumed him for him mm. to have responded in that way. So they recognize, uh, they recognize the scripture and they recognize the spirit of God working here. Mm. However, the disciples, like what you're saying, have eyes cannot see, have ears cannot hear, kind mm. of mouth cannot speak, and so on and so forth. You mean the, uh, the yeah, Pharisees. The, the Pharisees? Sorry, mm. the Pharisees, um, they couldn't do that. So they said, so it says in verse eighteen, says, so the Jews said to him. Said to him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? The, the, the disciples didn't need to ask that. But they were like, mm, what are you doing? They're like, what, what, give us scripture. Mm. Give us um, an authority. Mm. Give us something. What, what right do you have for doing these things? Mm. Jesus answered them, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. Mm. Wow. <laughs> and in three days, I will raise it up. So, so, so you can see that. To me, I think I I think I wrote, I wrote there. Jesus seems somewhat exhausted of, of them here. Yeah, you can say right. you can oh. sound the exhausted like. Yeah, I can't believe you. You know what? You, you do don't. do what you want to do. You know you don't want to do what you want to do. You know, but he was, um. Yeah, I said he sounded exhausted here, but he was onto them. He's like continue in your wickedness, for you will not prevail. Mm. They failed to see how Jesus personalized the temple to himself. They failed to see that. Mm. They failed mm. to see the the personal connection. Mm. But the disciples, they saw that. Straight away, they saw that. You know, they said, destroy this temple and I'll build up in three days. And here, they still continued in their ignorance. Mm. They still continued in their blindness. There's mm. a veil. Mm. That's not There's a veil lifted. that hasn't been lifted. Because look, they still have eyes and they cannot see. They said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple. Mm. And will you raise it up in three days? Mm. You know, it's like, they are looking at it in the literal sense. Like, yeah. What are you talking about? Are you, this temple, how can you raise it up in three, three days? days? They still did not see the personal connection that Christ mm. was making to the temple and the spiritual implications that yeah. he was, of what he was of what he was trying to um, communicate with them. Mm. You know? Don't know if you want to add anything. Yeah, I, I just think that it's just that their desire has taken over them. Mm. And what always causes angry anyway, because they're already furious. They are angry. Mm. They are I mean, the, the, it's going to be hard for them to see what Jesus is doing because their anger at that period is leading to sin. Mm. And Jesus' anger is the righteous anger mm. that is saying, why is your heart so so it's so hard. hardened mm. that you cannot even understand and see what I'm doing here, what this temple is all about. Mm. And with your anger that is leading them to sin, it's going to be very difficult for them to actually, their mind, because you know, don't forget, we say when 
your heart is in that level Polluted. is polluted is noisy yeah. is ton- the heart is already in the market yeah, post- the market, is market marketing is strategy is going yeah. on there there's already distraction there's already noisy mm. so it, it's impossible for them to see, hear god saying this is my son and his what he's saying is about his body mm. they can't hear they that, can't hear that. Because the their, pollution, the, the, uh, their mind is was already messed the noise, up. The noise, the noise. So the noise, the, their heart is already turned to marketplace mm. for different mm. things that is going on in there. Mm. So it's going to be very difficult. Meanwhile, the disciples who were with Jesus already understand because what is in them mm. is desire that they see that Christ mm. was desiring is for the benefit of the temple and for the people i mean doesn't it just make you remember for me it makes me remember sometimes conversations i've had with certain people where it's difficult to get past one stage yeah because there's so much you have to get you have to get rid of the clutter yeah first of all when you're speaking to mm. them there's so much clutter it's like well can you not see the point where we're going but sometimes you just have to exercise that patience because they are trying to declutter yeah and it's just so much you can tell that there's so much noise going on because this there's so much like they're pulling up every angle, pulling yeah. up every, and sometimes it's like it's just sometimes it's, it feels like it's a matter of just being right. Mm. It's like they just want to be right because it's that's not a matter what... of it's not even a matter of um let's assess what what is true anymore. Yeah. It's just a matter of I want to be because there's so much pollution and it's like so much that the enemy has downloaded in there. Mm. They can't even um they don't even know how to uh reason beyond that. Mm. Without mm. the help of the spirit, they can't. Yeah. Sometimes it's like it makes you feel like oh what you know what. I might as well just keep quiet. And just yeah, like, that's why those questions was just being thrown you know, at Jesus. You know. Yeah. So so yeah, it's uh it's amazing to see that um the 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 response of Christ mm. um created two it created two um actually I say two extremes I can mm. say two extremes or two two understanding mm. one was in instantly nobody had to tell them they knew oh wow. This is this is the spirit yeah. of God. Wow. Mm. And they knew scripture because they quoted scripture. Yeah, they quote yeah. Yeah. And then the ones whose heart was polluted, mm. where there was too much noise, they thought they knew scripture, yeah. but they didn't. They, they didn't. They didn't. They're thinking they're acting in scripture, but they aren't. And then well, then they're asking Christ for scripture. Um what science was give me scripture for this? Mm. Give me scripture for that. That's what they're doing to He didn't need to do that. He didn't need to do that. Because, because if you were really in scripture, you would already see that yeah. he was acting in line to prophecy. Mm. This was already this is a prophesied um in the book of Psalms that he will behave he will behave this way. Yeah. But because your heart is polluted, you can't even assess Definitely. that truth. That truth cannot even be assessed anymore. Mm. You know, so so yeah, I think that brings us to um to a close and like just understand that in summary, like we don't want to be the Pharisees. No. We want to be the disciples. Yeah. We want to be the humble ones. We want to be the teachable ones. Mm. We want to be the ones that are receiving from Christ. Mm. And we want that every spirit, um, every Pharisee spirit, shall mm. we say, that resides in us, mm. that is residing within, within us, with our loved ones, our, mm. our, our friends and families in our homes, May the Lord kill it. Amen. May you, go, may you be burnt down to the root in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Anything that will cause us, anything that will cause us to... Um, allowed pollution to mm. come into our being and cause us to be blind to spiritual things and cause us to question where we should already understand. Mm. Father Lord, I pray, oh God, for those that are listening and even for us, Father Lord, that you remove it far away from our lives in the name of Amen. Jesus. And you give us the strength, Lord, that we need, Father Lord, the wisdom, mm. the awareness and the discernment, Father Lord, to rebuke where we're supposed Amen. to rebuke, Father Lord, to pray where we're supposed to pray, Father Lord, to exercise violence in the spiritual or in the physical, Father Lord, where we should, so that we can protect our temple, especially in the times that we're in, in the name of Jesus. Amen. That our temple personally, our temple as a home, Amen. and our temple as a children, and, and everything, and the souls and the people that you have entrusted us with, Father Lord, may we not disappoint you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I just felt like going into that prayer, because I just felt so moved. Yeah, you know, you know, sometimes in this kind of message, prayer like that is very mm. necessary mm. because you know, pe- what, what we need to understand is the fact that the Pharisees couldn't understand that if Jesus was so angry and then so bad during the time that they came to arrest him, 
he said he would have called the regions his heavenly armed soldiers mm-hmm. to fight for him even when he was dying on the cross he said father lord forgive them for they don't know what, what they're, they're doing, doing. Yeah. that means it was not if if it was just not righteous anger he would have done so much thing mm-hmm. to show that look uh but because his righteous anger he still asked for forgiveness upon them mm-hmm. and uh, i just thank god that he gave us this opportunity to be able to um understand to come to this kind of understanding this kind of level of growth mm-hmm. you know because this, this, seeing this and understanding this and knowing this has enlightened me so much even wh- when i'm working or when i'm someone do something wrong to me i try to say no righteous anger pray for the person righteous anger don't get angry what makes people get angry is when you don't when what you desire is not met has not been met what wh- whatever you desire when it has not been met in any form you get upset and that due to anger. Mm. So maybe someone disappointed you. Your, your need has not been met. Mm. You get angry. Mm. Maybe someone dr- you're driving, someone dr- falling, uh, drove wrongly in front of you. It's because he has not gone your way. Mm. So you get angry. Mm. So anything that has not gone your way can get you upset yeah. and can build up anger. Mm. Instead of that building up anger, because you, you get through, this thing happens every single day. Things that can make you get angry every happens day. every day. So we need to learn how to deal with this, that we do not get angry into that level that will lead us to sin. Rather, righteous anger. Yes. Yeah. And to conclude, we've written how to maintain righteous anger. We've given, we've given them four bullet points on how to maintain righteous anger. So hopefully we have really understood what righteous anger is and what righteous anger isn't. Mm. And the aim is that we would let go of anything that will cause us to exercise um, unrighteous anger, which leads us to sin, and that we will do everything that we can to maintain righteous anger, which grieves sin. How to maintain righteous anger? Number one, remember righteous anger grieves sin. It does not lead us to sin. I guess so. In other words, what we're saying is be angry for the person or the people and not be angry um, against them or Mm. at them. Mm. So understand that when someone's doing something, yes, it's, it, it might be a violation, it might be something that caused you anger, but remember that you're angry for them. Mm. You're not angry against them. Mm. You know, you're angry against the spirit that is using them. Number two, understand the influence of wicked spirits that use people. Mm. So therefore, just like Jesus speaks to the spirit mm. and not to the person, mm. he can speak to the spirit in prayer. Yeah. You know, exercise that understand how to use how to do that in prayer mm. understand how to speak against the spirit in prayer yeah i'll say speak against the spirit not speak to the spirit because we have no business speaking to the spirit speak against it yeah and tell it where it must they, they have to listen to you yeah. because you're a child of god mm. they have to listen to you because the blood of jesus they have to listen they, they have to listen they to the authorities to, mm. in christ yeah. i'm telling you honestly they have to listen mm. you tell them where to go mm. you tell them what to do you tell them what they're allowed to do what they're not allowed to do you're not mm. allowed here mm. This is not your place. Mm. So go. They will go. They have to listen. Mm. Number three, have a heart of forgiveness. Mm. Don't respond for self-defense. Yes. Respond out of place of love mm. for that person or those group of people. Mm. It's not that you are trying to defend yourself because we don't have to do that. God mm. already defends us. Mm. Avengers is his. Mm. He's already in a position to defend us. If you um, respond out of place of self-defense it means that you think that nobody else can defend you like yeah. if i don't look after myself no one will look after me mm. um you know like as if god is not able to look after you yeah. and so you put your place you have in a position where you have to look after yourself you have to cover up mm. yourself. You have to, that's not the case yeah like not, like know. my daughter will ask me that what if the person did it mm. offend me purposely like yeah. they know what they did yeah i said you still forgive them yeah i say you still forgive them and pray for them mm. but because she's still trying to well, they know they because know sometimes we feel like these people know what they're doing yeah. or whatsoever that offend us yes you notice that because you're in the light mm. like the pharisees didn't notice what they that they, they're doing wrong thing because they're not in the light mm. so because you can recognize 
something you recognize it because you're in the light that's why you can see what that person is doing mm -hmm. the person at that time don't even know what they, they what they're doing or what they were doing yeah i used to have that i used yeah, to have that belief so. well, to be honest i honestly for a very long time even in my christian walk and in my growth with god i honestly held the belief that some people do know what they're doing and they do deserve my response mm. and they do just they need, they need to understand that i am angry with them mm. i did hold that belief for a very long time i feel like god is still working in my heart in that area mm. i would say that um that in in in, re in reference to that also in as much as we are exercising love um and all of that we have to be wise at the same time so i, I wouldn't advise you to constantly put yourself in a place where someone is constantly causing you grief and and anger mm, because it's, yeah. that's not healthy no either. it's not so we're not um we're not being ignorant to uh those that type of yeah. thing those area we're not saying that oh constantly you know you have to show love and it doesn't matter if they curse you and they always mean if you know that your heart can handle it then exit don't put yourself in that position where you're constantly being uh, whether that be disrespected or whatever it is that's yeah. constantly bothering um this Pulsing. There's somewhere in the Bible where it says if you're among someone that you know that is gonna get you involved in just getting uh is it angry or mm. getting you into sin, you just have to yeah. you know leave them, let yeah. them be. Yeah. So yeah. So that's number three, have a heart of forgiveness and don't respond out of self defense. Mm. Um and then number four, the last one is pray against the wicked spirit that might want to influence you to respond unrighteously mm. and continually guard your heart with the word. Yeah. The word, the word, the word. Hmm. Pray against that wicked spirit. If you notice that there's an there's an influence that wants to possess you, don't don't hesitate to pray hmm. and don't hesitate to rebuke it. If you notice that there's an wicked influence that is that is um want to possess your your children, your your friends, your family, your loved ones, or has possessed them, pray for them violently and ask that wicked spirit to leave. Hmm. And guide your heart with the word yeah. because the word is alive and is what. Is what we use even in prayer. Mm, it is mm. the word. It's the word that gives us the confidence to say what we're saying now. It's the mm. word that gives us the light, the knowledge that we need to be able to fight the enemy. So we guide constantly have to have that That's word right. in our lips and in our hearts to guide us. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, so you know, that is these things are very necessary step to take and uh we just May God help us all. Yeah, may God really help us because we we need the word of god to continue to renew to transform our heart the, somewhere in the bible that says do not be confirmed to this world but, but be transformed you know by the renew of our mind so you know i think by saying that you begin to see that no one we know what is right and want to choose to do what is wrong Mm -hmm. It's impossible to see someone that see light, that understand what light is, but want to choose to live in darkness. Mm -hmm. It is impossible. Mm -hmm. So that's what, whenever we see that and remember that, it will give us the heart mm -hmm. to love and to want to pray for that person. And every time it's not always the person, sometimes it's us mm -hmm. as well. You, because sometimes it's not always someone getting angry. It is us. What do you do that Why made that person that, person, yeah. that is causing that situation? So we always need well. to reflect on yourself and mm -hmm. yeah, take the necessary step of praying and reading Bible. We're just going to finish up with prayer. Father Lord, we thank you. We glorify you for giving us the grace and the ability, the strength to be able to deliver your word. And we pray that every ears that have heard this word today, that you will give them the power, the strength, the heart to be able to make use of this word in Jesus' name. Amen. You will let your word rest in their heart and transform it in Jesus' name. Amen. And you will break away every hard stone. You will melt every hard stone. You will break them away in Jesus' name. Amen. And you will let your word go in and soak in like a seed. And turn their heart of stone to soil, and so that they will receive that word and and let that word grow to transform their heart in Jesus' name. And let every gate be lifted, and let your glory come into their lives, and let your glory take place in their life in Jesus' name. And let your name forever be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Thank you so much again for listening. Mm -hmm. We trust that you've been blessed as we have been blessed even sharing it with you. Um, please, please, please don't forget to um, subscribe to our channel. 
um, to hear more of these type of messages and so much more that we've got in store for you. Please, when you subscribe, don't forget to click that notification bell so that you'll be notified as soon as we have any videos released. Please like our our video, share it with your friends and families and bless it with someone, someone else. Don't feel free to leave a comment to ask a question and make a contribution um, on the comment section down below. Thank you very much again for listening and may the peace of the Lord remain with you now and always. Amen.